so uh, thank you dhirendra sir for uh, accepting our invitation to deliver this tech talk so now i will welcome i would uh, request uh, vineet bajaj sir to please introduce uh, sir to the participants vineet ji please uh, very good evening to all uh, thank you raman ji for providing me this opportunity because uh, as is happens uh, sir is my btech guru ji also so i have known sir uh, since last uh, from my btech time that is more than 25 years he has taught me when i was doing my btech so you can understand that the whole my core academic uh, and this uh, technical foundation is what today i am today what he has taught us during our btech time a brief introduction of professor singhal uh, he did his btech uh, from uh, bhopal with first division uh, and distinction in 1986 and uh, from bhopal university and she, since he was the uh, he got uh, first rank with distinction he was uh, directly offered a phd by iit bhu varanasi and uh, did completed his phd in 1993 uh as per his professional uh, and uh, academic experience he has worked as an industrialist uh, in industry also before starting his uh, teaching and research uh, uh, journey as a research fellow in the department of civil engineering banaras in hindu university during his phd then uh, started as a lecturer got promoted uh, then went for his post doctoral fellowship uh, to japan uh, kangazawa in 1996 uh, later on was elevated as uh, like he joined after coming back he joined as lecturer at nit jalandhar which was uh, that time known as rec and later on uh, elevated as associate professor in gyanis elsing uh, college of indian technology patenda uh, now known as raja ranjit singh uh, technical university punjab uh worked there as associate professor till june 2012 and post that he uh joined as a professor and uh, chairman of Co civil engineering department at uh, the uh, dean bandhu choturam uh, university of research and technology known briefly known as dcrust his uh, phd was on uh, uh fiber reinforced concrete Uh, basically an investigation on chlor of investigation of chloride and sulfate effect on sfrc he has more than uh, seven phd's under his name supervises so seven phd scholars more than 23 mtex with the numerous papers of more than 80 plus papers in international and national conferences uh, has been part of various academic bodies professional bodies and uh, currently he is uh, serving as a uh, Uh, emeritus professor at uh, dcrust university i welcome you sir and uh, it is an honor for me that my guru will be giving a lecture today thank you raman ji thank you dr vineet and uh, i am highly thankful to get this opportunity to interact with so many people in industries the topic i have chosen that is disaster risk reduction and its measures actually i know very well that uh, most of the people are interested in concrete but uh, i chose this topic because what i feel that uh, that awareness is must in all the people how we should tackle disasters for example we are facing floods in many parts in the country today so how we should so that was my aim and what i feel that civil engineers have major role in disaster mitigations that's why i have taken this topic and uh, before i start i will say that uh, i will first discuss fundamentally what disaster is then i will go into the mitigations and anywhere if anyone has question most welcome
Uh, yes, sir. Uh, you may now share your screen and start presenting. Yeah, I'm. We will take question and answers in the uh, last of the session. And uh, uh, sir, thank you for this topic because uh, nowadays we are uh, witnessing a lot of disasters and a lot of uh, things could be saved uh, if we take in consideration all the. Uh, these uh, things in our construction only. So, yeah. uh, request you to please, sir, start the. Yeah, that was my motive. That yeah, was please. my motive. That's why I have yeah. taken. So, disaster risk reduction and its measures. So, uh, as I said, fundamentally, I'm going to first discuss what disaster is. Yes. And this is the definition given by a World Health Organization. A serious disruption of the functioning of a community or a Sir, society. Yeah. Can you just uh, put it on the presentation mode? I think it is not in the presentation mode right now. I did that. Yeah, no, it's, it's fine. Yeah, it's fine. Is it okay? Is it okay now? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. A serious disruption of functioning of a community or a society causing widespread human, material, economical, and environmental losses, which exceeds the ability of the affected communities or society to cope with its own resources. So there are actually many definitions. And I have taken this one because uh, whichever definition you take, that will definitely come that uh, human, material, economical, and environmental losses, and that exceeds the ability of the affected communities or societies to cope with its own resources. And just check a uh, few major disasters in India. This is uh, from Chennai floods 2015. As we said, economical losses, you can see airport totally flooded, loss of life, injuries, and when you see this chopper, army, you can understand extraordinary measures are taken to meet with this disaster. This is about the Kathmandu earthquake. Again, in the fo top photograph, you can see the property losses, and uh, that earthquake even led to Everest avalanches. And here I put this photograph to show you that the in definition we got exceeds the ability of the community. And if we if you all remember government of India came to help Nepal and people were people were brought from Nepal for the treatment. So this is from that uh, plane extraordinary measures we know we have gone through that covid 19 property losses loss of life injuries and i hope you remember this scene this was very much over the news channels 10000 bad hospital that was inaugurated by our honorable minister amit saji extraordinary measures so whenever you see these disasters these are common features. So when you have such common features, then we can, of course, study what the characteristic features of the disasters are. It is an extraordinary event. Usually occurs because one of the danger sources, whether caused by nature or human, because disasters can be natural, it can be man-made, seriously and substantially impact the most vulnerable group, of course, we are going to study what vulnerable, but uh, vulnerability, when you say that is showing the weakness, the, if the infrastructure is weak, it's going to be damaged more. Results in serious imbalance in the community functions. Just if you see the valley floods, all roads were flooded, there was no traffic, that's why serious imbalance in the community functions, results in significant losses in human loss, materials and environmental that I have shown with the photographs, 
and as I said, exceeds the ability of an affected community to cope with its own resources. So all these features, I think, must be clear. Then there is one more term, emergency, and it is important for us to understand what the difference in between emergency and disaster is. So emergency is a state in which normal procedures are suspended and extraordinary measures are taken in order to avoid a disaster. An emergency that can be war, that can be medical, depending on the nature. But when we say emergency, the biggest difference which comes a situation in which community is capable of coping is emergency. That means, Amari koi bhi society, for example, Sonipat hai, koi Dili hai, koi accident hota hai, kuch hota hai, we can meet with that through our own resources. But if it is a disaster, we, we will be not able to do that. Emergency situations are generated by real occurrences of the events. For example, I said accident train derailment, for example, that Balasore train derailment, that require immediate attention of emergency resources. A situation in which community is incapable of coping is disasters. And you can understand that accident, train derailment, that can be frequent. But disasters, that will not be as frequent as emergency. So that is the biggest difference. Now, hazard. Hazard is a rare or extreme event in the natural or human-made environment that adversely affects human life, property, or activity to the extent of causing a disaster. If you see the wordings, may thus be defined as a physical event, phenomena, or human activity that may cause the loss of life. That means if care is not taken, then hazard will convert into disaster. Just say earthquake hai, agar earthquake aara hai, but if all the buildings are earthquake resistant, that means the loss will be minimum, then the, that earthquake can be hazard, that will not be a disaster. But if the buildings are not earthquake resistant, if the structures are not earthquake resistant, then there would be a big loss, then it would be a disaster, then it would not remain the hazard. Other, uh, the best example which I used to put before the audience that, for example, if there is avalanche, more chances are that it's going to be hazard. You can understand that there high reaches, there population come, infrastructure come. That's why there are losses come. That's why it can remain hazard. It would not be a disaster. Prevention. Prevention is defined as those activities taken to prevent a natural phenomena or potential hazard from having harmful effects on either people or economic assets. For example, here in the photograph, I have shown this river. And you can see in this photograph that this embankment, this has been strengthened. If it has been strengthened, then water will not go into the city from here. Otherwise, the chances of floods are more. So this is a strengthening of this, that is prevention. The disaster prevention refers to the measures taken to eliminate the root cause. By strengthening this embankment, we have eliminated the root cause of the flooding. Now, disaster preparedness is building up of capacities before a disaster situation prevails in order to reduce impacts. As measures include inter-alia, availability of food reserves, emergency reserves fund, sealed reserves, health facilities, warning systems, logistical infrastructure, relief manual, human resources, and soils of the project. Before I discuss it, I will put that example that in the last week, when there was flood, the when there was flooding over the roads in Delhi, 
आप वॉज ब्लेमिंग टू बीजेपी बीजेपी वॉज ब्लेमिंग टू आप पार्टी कि इन लोगों ने कोई काम ही नहीं किया है बाई से बाई पुटिंग दिस ब्लेम दे वॉज सोइंग दैट प्रिपेयरनेस वॉज नॉट डन प्रिपेयरनेस हैड बीन डन then flooding i think that would not have been that serious as it was so preparedness for example you see regularly that ndrf team whenever there are floods or earthquakes ndrf team by creating that ndrf government of india ha has prepared against the disaster so you see the example of preparedness preparation of disaster management plans that's why i said by preparing that ndrf team we are prepared because those people are trained how to avoid the disasters so that might be one of the plan development of system for public warning and distribution of information for example abhi delhi mein jo aapka hathni kund barrage se pani aana tha that was warning you might have noted always there was a news over the channels lohe ke pul pe 205.45 ke upar pani aa gaya hai that was public warning emergency communication emergency response personal training as i said that ndrf securing adequate resources and public education that means making the public aware how they should behave reconstruction and it is important when we go through this definition reconstruction because in disaster management the reconstruction means that for example if there is earthquake and if a building or anything collapse that means if it is to be rebuilt then it should be with all preventive measures if dobara se earthquake aata hai to fir usko collapse nahi karna hai plus preventive measures rehabilitation is the restoration of the basic social functions that means disaster ke time pe jitna sara disturb ho gaya hai when all the services will be restored that is rehabilitation response is the set of activities implemented after the impact of the disasters for example hum jo evacuate kar rahe hain public ko उनको जो फूड सप्लाई कर रहे हैं जो मेडिकल हेल्प पहुंचा रहे हैं ऑल दीज आर द सेट ऑफ एक्टिविटीज इंप्लीमेंटेड आफ्टर द इम्पैक्ट ऑफ अ डिजास्टर इन ऑर्डर टू असिस नीड रिड्यूस द सफरिंग लिमिट द स्प्रेड एंड द कॉन्सिक्वेंस ऑफ द डिजास्टर ओपन द वे ऑफ रिहेबिलिटेशन जो सी डिजास्टर आई है सेकेंड टर्म इन माई टाइटल इज रेस्ट risk is the expected loss losses life loss person injured damage to property and disruption of the economic activity due to a particular hazard and risk is the product of hazard and vulnerability and i think the best way to understand is the triangle you see this triangle one side is hazard hazard here we are calling for example earthquake flood all these are hazard vulnerability as said that means weakness and uh, for example i said that if all the buildings are earthquake resistant that means vulnerability is less if the population is more that means vulnerability is more that shows vulnerability exposure For example, floods are का बहुत ज़्यादा है या earthquake है. For example, the intensity is very high. And now you see about this triangle. आपका कोई भी एक side कम होगी, vulnerability कम हो. For example, population is less. For example, all the buildings are earthquake resistant. Then this side will be less. That means the risk will be less. अर्थक्वेक आता है आपका इंटेंसिटी कम है देन दिस साइड विल बी लेस दैट मींस द रिस्क वुड बी लेस दैट्स व्हाई रिटन ओवर हियर रिस्क इज अ कॉम्बिनेशन ऑफ इंटरेक्शन ऑफ हैजर्ड 
exposure and vulnerability, as I explained over here, which can be represented by the three sides of the triangle. If any of these sides increases, the area of the triangle increases, as the common of the as the amount of the risk also increases. If any one of the side reduces, the risk reduces. If we can eliminate one side, there is no risk. I think must be clear. And now you see vulnerability that is affected by many factors. Poverty, for example, there, ha there have been many examples in the past. India mein agar ek earthquake aata hai, intensity 6 hai, 7 hai, or uh, same intensity ka earthquake Japan mein, USA mein aata hai, to Japan mein aur USA mein losses kam hote hain, India mein jyada hote hain. Because Japan when you say, or uh, USA when you say, they are rich in the resources, unke sari buildings earthquake resistant hai, और यहां पे दिल्ली में जब भी हम सोचते हैं हम हमेशा यही सोचते हैं कि दिल्ली में पता नहीं कितनी पुराने बिल्डिंग बनी हुई है जो कि अर्थक्वेक रेसिस्टेंट नहीं है अगर इंटेंसिटी ज्यादा हो तो लॉसेस काफी होंगे इट यू कैन से एज इफ देयर इज सम एजेड पर्सन और सम चाइल्ड सेक्स फॉर एग्जांपल मेल फीमेल ऑल दिस आर गोइंग टू अफेक्ट द वल्नरेबिलिटी इन द सेम वे Local lake of local institution, for example, आपका NDRF है, National Institute of Disaster Management है, जहाँ पे proper training होती है, awareness program चलते हैं, अगर ये सब हैं, तो vulnerability कम होगी. And I said कि अगर हमारे कोई अर्थके कहता है, कोई भी losses नहीं है, then that is we are going to call hazard. If losses are then we are going to call disaster. That means when hazard will meet with vulnerability, that's why written over here, vulnerability plus hazard, that's equal to disaster. I think must be clear now. Now, after that disaster risk reduction, I said in my title, and you see, in view of the capacity building through disaster management in the recent time, the concept of disaster risk reduction has appeared. Disaster risk reduction we are going to define as hazard into the vulnerability upon the coping capac capacity. Here coping capacity that means that in the date mein amara disaster management pe kaafi kaam chal raha hai, to usse amara losses kam hote ja rahe hai. So that means that is coping capacity. That's why disaster risk reduction we are going to say H hazard into the vulnerability divided by C, the coping capacity. Or if this is complete, then disaster resilience is the ability of the individuals, community, organization, and states to adapt to and recover from hazards. That means when we are prepared to prepare, that means we will say that now we are disaster resistant. Now, types of disasters. And if you see the top photographs, must be clear that it is flood. This is uh, from that uh, Nepal earthquake. These are the natural disasters. Train derailment aapka, and there was one uh, crash of the helicopter, Vashno Devi helicopter Hatsa. These are man-made disasters. So uh, primarily we are saying that uh, man-made disaster and natural disasters. This is from Uttarakhand flood, Kedarnath Mandir, natural disaster. And natural disaster we can say classify into hydrometeorological, cyclone, tropical cyclone, floods, drought, desertification, storms, fog, geophysical that means earthquake, landslide, tsunami, Biological, for example, we have bird flu, COVID-19. And if you see the losses, of, depending on the disaster, maximum loss we get from floods, then from a storm, then from earthquake. That's why if you see these losses, you can understand how we should prepare against these disasters. 
Now, very often we hear disaster management. And I just defined disaster risk reduction. Basic difference which comes, that if we to apply disaster management, so, first of all, we have to study the risk and vulnerability. Ko study karna hoga. So, that we are doing as disaster risk reduction. That means, disaster risk reduction, we have to assessment the vulnerability, how is it, how is it, how is it, risk, how is it, how is it, analyze it. And when that will be implemented in the field, then it will be disaster management. And when you say disaster management, the important term is it is a continuous and integrated process. Barabar chal rahe, 24 hour chal rahe. Continuous and integrated process of planning, organizing, coordinating, and implementing measures which are necessary or expedient for prevention of danger or threat of any disaster. You can understand, aaj bhi hum kahin na kahin apne ko prepare kar rahe hain, prevent kar rahe hain, prepare for example i put that example is strengthening of the embankment of the river usko wahan pe strengthen kar rahe hain to that means hum apne ko prepare bhi kar rahe hain mitigation or reduction of risk of any disaster or its severity or consequences capacity building preparedness to deal with any disaster prompt response to any threatening disaster situation or disaster and you see i said it's a continuous and integrated process now you see this is the disaster and these are pre-disaster risk reduction phase that means prevention mitigation preparedness these are pre-disaster uh, pre steps and response recovery development rehabilitation reconstruction that will come under development. These are post disaster recovery phases. And actually, we call this to be disaster management cycle. And very important for it, significance of early warning system. And I think SMA would delay the example put Kanna Subset Chair. So we news channel pe dekhaoga. Lohe ke pul pe paani 205.5 ke upar a gaya hai. Khatre ka mark park kar gaya hai. Flooding ke chances hain. This is what the early warning is. When we get that 205.5 at that lohe ka pul, we are warning the people, we are asking them to evacuate. That is early warning. So early warning system are an essential tool for the risk management and disaster preparedness that help save lives and minimize the potential impact of the disasters. To be effective early warning system need to rely on the direct participation of at-risk communities, facilitate public education and awareness of risk, disseminate messages and warning efficiently, and help maintain a constant state of preparedness to enable early action. And I will just discuss this with the cyclone. Now I am taking the first one, cyclone. For example, we have just seen that uh, uh, also Viparjoy cyclone in Gujarat. So they are we call it tropical cyclone because they are generated in tropical areas of the ocean near the equator. They are cyclonic means the circular wind you see always. You can see in the photograph also. Important part is that in northern hemisphere, <coughs> it is counterclockwise, and in southern hemisphere, it is clockwise. And always you hear in the news that Bengal ki khadi pe low pressure system ban gaya hai, ya is bar vipardhoy ke case mein aapka Gujarat mein Arabian Sea pe tha. So low process system banta hai, usme ek eye, this is eye. And then you say that it is tropical cyclone. But for that, it is must that the wind speed must be 74 miles per hour or 119 kilometer per hour. And 
the main features of the tropical cyclone, severe winds, heavy rainfall, storm surge. अगर आप लोगों को अभी न्यूज़ चैनल पे याद हो ऊपर जो साइक्लोन का, I think आपने ये तीनों चीज देखे होंगे. Winds बहुत ज़्यादा थी, heavy rainfall था बराबर न्यूज़ चैनल में हम देख रहे थे. और अरेबियन सी का पानी सिटी में आ रहा था जो हम कहते हैं लो टाइड्स हाई टाइड्स जो आर भट्टा दैट इज अ स्ट्रॉम सर्च एंड आई हैव पुट दिस फोटोग्राफ तो हाइलाइट द सिग्निफिकेंस ऑफ अर्ली वार्निंग सिस्टम एंड दिस इज अबाउट द साइक्लोन फायरलैंड एंड यू सी दैट वाज इन 2013 अक्टूबर you see that was identified by indian meteorological department on 9th of october 2013 and that struck the coast of odisha on 12th october we got 3 days time to evacuate the people from these coastal areas and we were able to do that very successfully and even the efforts were praised by united nations you see united nations say said in mid october cyclone fyalan swept over the bay of bengal and across the eastern coast of india causing hundreds of millions of dollars in damage and affecting the livelihood of 13 million people the evacuation of more than a million people in the states of odisha and andhra pradesh in response to effective early warning resulted in much lower deaths toll than a catastrophic cyclone of similar strength that struck in 1999 leaving 10000 people dead and i hope this is of 2013 and the same thing you can recollect from viparjar that that toll was minimum because all the people were evacuated and uh, you see we are discussing vulnerability this way you can see this is the map of india and mainly you can see over here two colors light blue and dark blue this dark blue shows higher vulnerability yahan pe vulnerability bahut zyada hai but here this is minimum minimum of course here but along coastal line light blue color और यहाँ पे अभी गुजरात में हमने विपर जो साइक्लोन देखा है अगेन यू कैन सी वॉलनेबिलिटी इज हाई सबसे पहले डिजास्टर मैनेजमेंट पर हमें वॉलनेबिलिटी ऐसे चेक करना है दैट मींस जहाँ पे वॉलनेबिलिटी ज्यादा है डिजास्टर मैनेजमेंट प्लान अकॉर्डिंगली उसी हिसाब से बनेगा फॉर एग्जाम्पल साइक्लोन के लिए हमें यहाँ पे कुछ नहीं करना है बट जहाँ पे वॉलनेबिलिटी ज्यादा है फॉर एग्जाम्पल आई ऑल्सो कंपेयर दैट वे गुजरात में आई होप मेनी पीपल मस्ट बी रिमेम्बरिंग दैट भोज अर्थ क्विक तो यहाँ पे हमें जो भी बिल्डिंग बनानी है दैट शुड बी अर्थ क्विक रेसिस्टेंट एज वेल एज दैट शुड बी साइक्लोन रेसिस्टेंट बट अगर हम यहाँ पे ला रहे हैं उड़ीसा में यहाँ पे अर्थ क्विक के चांसेस उतने नहीं है जितने यहाँ पे है दैट मीन्स यहाँ पे हमें साइक्लोन रेसिस्टेंट बहुत अच्छे से रखना है तो वॉलिटी का स्टडी करने का हमें सबसे बड़ा फायदा यह है नाउ व्हाट वी नीड टू डू इन साइक्लोन्स ड्यूरिंग द स्टॉम डू नॉट वेंचर आउट अनलेस एडवाइज टू इवेक्यूट फॉर एग्जांपल इफ यू आर वेरी मच ऑन द कोस्टल लाइन यू विल बी आस्ट टू इवेक्यूट इफ यू हैव अ वेकल एंड विश टू मूव आउट ऑफ योर हाउस लीव अर्ली बिफोर द आउनसेट ऑफ द साइक्लोन इट इज ऑफन बेस्ट टू स्टे एट होम avoid remaining on the top floor of the dwelling stay close to the ground avoid taking shelters near old and damaged buildings or near trees i hope you must be remembering the news channels over the cyclone vapor joy jahan pe dikha rahe the purani building gir gayi hai ya ped gire hue hain sadkon pe that's why do not touch power lines one may got electrical listen to the advice of local officials and emergency workers be sure that a storm has subsided before venturing out and all of course we should remain calm sab cheez aaram se soch ke karna hai 
Now coming to the most important part as civil engineer. There are several Indian standard codes and standards. 875, I hope you remember this is for loading. 456, we are using for concrete. 800, we are using for steel structures. Among others, which detail the requirement of the design and construction of a structure taking into account wind loads as well. Likewise, there are Indian Road Congress guidelines, which are for roads, culverts, bridges. Simple design and construction guidelines to improve the cyclone resistance of various buildings and structures have been brought out. And for cyclone resistant structures, you have particularly Indian standard 15498-2004. Now design considerations. And I think most of you must be remembering that when we are considering the lateral loads, we are taking partial load factor to be 1.3. That's why the design to be carried out for 1.3 times the basic wind speed as recommended in IS-875-2015 part 3. The basic wind speed as per code in most part of the coastal zone is 50 meter per second up to the 10 meter above ground level. And I hope you remember there are many coefficients K1, K2, K3 if the building is going to be in, uh, you say, in concrete jungle, away from the city, if height is more, uh, topography, all these are considered before the final wind force is calculated. The design will also be able to withstand seismic forces in regions which are additionally vulnerable. For example, just I said, Bhuj area. The local community will be encouraged to construct houses which will be cyclone resistant, urban local bodies and Panchayati Raj institutions will be asked to ensure this. And for this, I can put the example, National Building Code, Amara Kata, of Sabi building seismic zone 4, seismic zone 5, may sorry, earthquake resistant on each AA. You see, type C, if you are in high vulnerable area, for example, I have shown the map of India, Odisha, Andhra Pradesh, in Gujarat, mein hai, pe building sari hamari cyclone resistant honi chahiye. Sloping RCC roofs will be used to provide quick rainwater drainage and avoid any seepage or leakage. Minimum M30 grade concrete to be used and FE415 grade of steel to be used. An extra cover of 5 mm beyond that is specified in IS456 for the relevant exposure condition is to be provided. Agar ASI area hai, coastal area, jahan pe cyclone ke chances hai, in addition 5 mm cover hume provide or karna hai. Of course, all the material is uh, reinforcement is steel, water that should meet the requirement of Indian standards. The walls and all the RCC work will be plastered with cement mortar of 1 is to 4. The outside plaster can be in two coats. The building will have suitable cement plaster coating both outside and inside, both outside and inside. Important. The special design issues for multi-purpose cyclone rest shelter. And actually, if you go through this slide, what we wish to say that cyclone shelters banane, that should be for multi-purpose use. As a name, a banadia cyclone the weight current is the cyclone Iga, the be used current as a name. The cyclone name, architect, no cyclone name that can be used as a school building. And if it is to be used as a school building, then of course, from IS 875, we should take the loading accordingly. That's what this slide is. Or as I am Kyokaran, Kyoki Agarusko. Continuously use current school building ke liye ya community center ke liye, we are maintaining that structure. Asa nahi hai ke cyclone aara hai, do saal baad aara hai, usi din building khole, but what we have found that the building has deteriorated. Use karne like bhi nahi bache ke. That's why we used to say multi-purpose cyclone shelters. 
Cyclone shelters will be located preferably about 1.5 km away from the coast. The shelter will be located near a school or preferably within a school premises for a cluster of villages. Alternatively, it will be located as a community facility for the cluster of the villages. The plinth height of 1.5 mm will be used for stilt, with the height varying from 2.5 to 4.5 if the storm surge level is more than 1.5 and less than 4.5. In all the cases, the flow level of a shelter will be at least 0.5 meter above the possible maximum surge level. A sloped ramp will be provided in case the surge level exceeds 1.5 meter. The cyclone shelter will be designed with RCC frame and laterally supported flare walls. I will show a video on this. The shelter will have a rectangular or polygonal plan depending on the functional aspect with curved corners for better aerodynamic features and the non-erosion of the walls. A rectangular plan with curved corners is more functional for many aspects. An overhead RCC water tank with reasonable storage capacity will be provided. Rainwater harvesting techniques must be adopted. Construction of new building structures. We are, I told that we are going mainly for multipurpose cyclone shelters. For roads, culverts, and bridges. An important part is that each Village must be connected with all weather road. Kitna is cyclone, but they, we should have access. That's why efforts will be made to provide at least one link road for each village that is accessible even during the cyclone and flood inundation periods. The link road and the culverts on the road will be with required hazard resistant structural design specifications and planning. That's why we said that we need to follow IRC guidelines accordingly. Each link road to the village and to the shelter will be identified and marked for mandatory maintenance, as I said for cyclone shelters. The link road and culvert will be designed and led with road level 0.5 meter above the possible flood level. Amendment of the road will be well protected. The subgrade and main course of the road will have the same specification as that national highway. It will be at least single lane of about 4 meter width with adequate camber for allowing quick drainage. The link road that leads to a shelter will have to be laid in M30 grade concrete. Bridges and culverts will be designed with RC slab as per IRC recommendations. The minimum width of the culvert will be for two lane because we may expand in the future. M30 grade concrete and FE415 reinforcement is still that is minimum to be used. And when you see this road, I think you will not find that M30 grade concrete because it, it is made with waste materials. Today we are trying to use waste materials to use waste materials. So we are doing a proper experiment and we are doing it after it. So what I have discussed about the construction of cyclone shelters, road, culverts, bridges, all these we know, this construction, whatever the construction is, we know as structural measures. But if there is no construction, then we say non-structural measures. And in no non-structural measure, coastal zone management, that is very important. When we say coastal zone management, you can understand with the example, Abhi Jo Dali Mein Aapka Floods Ka Aaya Tha, Sabhi Log Kaya Rhe Thay Ke Flood Plains Mein Population Aa Gai Hai, Aur Usse Kaafi Nuksan Hua Hai, That is actually that, you can understand that was Flood Zone, And here it is Coastal Zone Management. That means, Jo Low Lying Area Hai, Hamari Koosis Rhe Ghi, On Low Lying Areas Mein, 
पॉपुलेशन को सेटल नहीं करें पॉपुलेशन को सेटल इस हिसाब से करना है कि जो समर्देंस मिनिमम हो ताकि सेफ रहे दैट इज व्हाट द कोस्टल जोन मैनेजमेंट इज एंड एज आई सेड नाउ यू सी ए वीडियो ऑफ साइक्लोन सेल्टस that will give a good idea this is from odisha we have seen major cyclone events in the recent past and one of the challenges has been that of being able to safely evacuate large number of people from coastal habitations that are highly vulnerable to uh, cyclonic winds flooding to safe locations through the national cyclone risk mitigation project phase 1 and 2 and the coastal disaster risk reduction project the world bank is funding almost a thousand cyclone shelters that are going to be built across the entire indian coastline these vary in size from housing 500 people to housing uh, 2000 to 2500 people so even if you take an average of 1000 Close to a million people along the entire Indian coastline will have a safe shelter to go to in case there is a cyclone or a heavy tropical storm. The way the cyclone shelters are located is that they are typically located in what one would describe as the host village. But the cyclone shelter would also, in all likelihood, serve neighboring villages. The cyclone shelters have been designed after extensive consultation with the community and especially uh, women members of the community. the cyclone shelter are not only for protecting their lives at the time of the disaster but they are also spaces that the community can use in regular times so they've been put to use as schools essentially primary schools as secondary schools as colleges as community centers for the community to meet or for other community functions it allows community better ownership of the space it also helps in better maintenance of uh, this infrastructure and optimizes the investment towards building uh, this kind of infrastructure the access road to these cyclone shelters is typically a all weather road and in places where uh, the road is not in good condition or the cyclone shelter is located in a place where access is not adequate the project is also financing access roads Every uh, multi-purpose evacuation shelter also has a generator facility of a fairly high capacity. The generator serves as a backup to pump up water, but also maintain a basic level of uh, illumination within the premises. One of the features that we have included in every cyclone shelter is a toilet for disabled. You have a WC with a railing for people to be able to hold on. At the floor level, there is no obstruction, which ensures that any movement of wheelchairs doesn't get obstructed the lift of zero point ya budget to the overload hetla that is what some bahut khati ho sakti hai aur hum ka mere bahut kya khati khati ki bahut log ko jana na jivan hani khati ki kintu ek jo mahamari baati astra story ta tiyari hela phalare hum gram ro lok man kar bahut unnati khati ho je hum jethe bada vipad ase re nijo jivan ko baati rakhe ki anya jivan ko rakha kari community is really the first responders this goes a long way in making sure Life is safe. People are rescued. They get immediate medical attention, as well as the most vulnerable within a community are taken care of. Yeah. After completing this cyclone, uh, I, I would like to know if any question. If some point is to be clear, any question? If you have, okay, then I will come to the next. Any questions, participants? If you have any questions, you can ask, sir. or we will take any question in uh, in the last of the session sir please proceed yeah the next event i am taking that's floods 
And whenever you see floods, I think we must be clear from the recent incidences that uh, water will come out of the river. That's why inadequate capacity of the river to contain within their banks the high flow brought down from the upper catchment area following heavy rainfall leads to flooding and that has happened very much in the river Yamuna, which we are, we are discussing near about Delhi. Many reasons, main reasons are silting of the rivers, inadequate capacity within the bank, river bank erosion, river bed erosion, flow obstructions and change in river course, poor natural drainage, and cyclone acid, heavy rains, storm surge, that's why that also leads to flooding, meandering of the rivers, deforestation, very often we hear that forest come out of flood ki chances are And these are typical photographs, these are from Uttarakhand and this is from Kela. Flood. Now vulnerability, as I discussed in case of cyclone, so in, in India, actually we have, uh, we are studying the vulnerability about floods, reason-wise. So first is Brahmaputra river reason, and when you see this one, I think must be clear that the area which is falling in the northeast, where you have this Brahmaputra river, this is considered to be the highly vulnerable area. जब भी आपका मॉनसून सीजन स्टार्ट होता है हम फ्लड्स का सबसे पहले आसाम वगैरह से देखते हैं ब्रह्मपुत्र रिवर द नेक्स्ट यू हैव गंगा रिवर रीजन द सेकंड वल्नरेबल एरिया एंड स्टार्टिंग फ्रॉम हरियाणा पंजाब हिमाचल यमुना रिवर एंड गंगा रिवर दैट एरिया एंड इट्स गोइंग अप टू वेस्ट बंगाल Northwest region, you can see over here some part of Punjab, some goes to that uh, Yamna catchment area. Otherwise, Punjab, Joaka Purana, India Katha, just my Panch River Atiti, that area. Central India and Deccan region, this one, you can see in the Navada, Tapti, all this river, and this is the least vulnerable area. And Joby may have said discuss Karata early warning system. You know, the reference like a Yamuna Kapol. So, in case of floods, the main components of early warning system detection, warning, and response. And the early warning system the, we are developing that is called Bavarian flood warning system. And First, see the main components of it and try to understand it this way. The Aka flood skill is Central Water Commission River Pay Barabar flood level check. For example, I quoted 205.5 for Dali Loe Kapol. So that is taken by Central Water Commission. What data note kar Dusra part hai, Indian Meteorological Department ka river ka aapka Flood danger ko par kar raha hai aur wahan pe Indian Meteorological Department kehta hai ke heavy rains ke chances hai. That means flood is going to be severe. So it will depend ke agar aapka flood ke koi chances nahi hai, kal ko dhoop rahegi, to flood danger kam ho jayega. That means these two are to be coordinated together. That's why I have combined these two. Then यहाँ पे आपका डेवलप हो गया कि फ्लड के चांसेस हैं कि नहीं। Accordingly we will inform the public. That's why product that will be informed dissemination through email, SMS. That's why you see आजकल मोबाइल पे SMS आता है NDMA का उसका पार्ट यही है। Then public is informed accordingly. But in any river actually you have four levels. You can see over here one, two, three, four. One, for example, June may have normal level of minor job start hota hai, job monsoon start hota hai, minor overflow we have noted. 
सेकंड पे जब हम आ रहे हैं फ्लडिंग कुछ स्टार्ट हो रही है थर्ड फ्लडिंग ऑफ सम बिल्डिंग्स फॉर एग्जांपल अब आपका दो दो सौ के आसपास हम पहुंच गए हैं अब आपका खतरे का निशान आने वाला है उसके आसपास पहुंच गए हैं और उसके अकॉर्डिंगली सिटी में कहा कहा सबमर्जेंस हो गया है और फॉर एग्जांपल हमने 205.5 को कवर अप कर दिया नाउ एक्सटेंसिव फ्लडिंग जो हम लोगों ने अभी देखा है न्यूज चैनल में सड़क पे पानी आ गया घरों में पानी घुस गया दैट इज लेवल फोर तो आपका यह सेंट्रल वाटर कमीशन ऐसा स्केल बना रहता है उससे नोट करता है सबसे इंपॉर्टेंट पार्ट यह है आप देखिए कि ये फ्लड वार्निंग सिस्टम अर्ली वार्निंग सिस्टम फ्लड्स के लिए जो हम डेवलप कर रहे हैं हर सिटी के लिए अलग अलग होगा इट विल इट्स नॉट पॉसिबल कि हर जगह एक ही सिस्टम हो जाए क्योंकि हर सिटी की टोपोग्राफी पे ये डिपेंड करेगा फॉर एग्जाम्पल जो मॉडल आप दिल्ली में ले रहे हैं दैट कांट बी एप्लीकेबल टू बॉम्बे बट हर अर्ली वार्निंग सिस्टम के ये चार इंपॉर्टेंट पार्ट रहेंगे ही रहेंगे नाउ सिविल इंजीनियर का यहाँ पे क्या क्या रोल है सबसे पहले आपको प्रोवेंशन में भी मैंने दिखाया था स्ट्रेंथनिंग ऑफ द बैंक डैम्स रेजरवायर्स एंड यू कैन अंडरस्टैंड हमारे यहाँ अभी डैम्स की बड़ी प्रॉब्लम है बिकॉज हमारा वाटर रिसोर्सेस मैनेजमेंट बहुत खराब है हमारे इतने फ्लडिंग होती है बट सारा पानी धीरे धीरे सी में चला जाता है अल्टीमेटली हम मई जून में ट्रॉफ के सिचुएशन फेस करते हैं तो डैम्स रेजरवायर्स एंड अदर वाटर स्टोरेज यू कैन अंडरस्टैंड डैम्स वी आर क्रिएटिंग टू स्टोर द वाटर एंड देन दैट वाटर इज सब्सिक्वेंटली यूज पर्टिकुलरली ड्यूरिंग ड्राई मंथ और यू सी फॉर इरीगेशन पावर जनरेशन परपज channel improvement and if you see this photograph i have tried to show you a lined canal channel improvement that means hamare paas zameen kam hai aur floods ka jo water aa raha hai jo pass karna hai uski quantity zyada hai that's why if you have this lined canal the velocity can be higher and that will increase the flow sea wall Coastal protection work, and if you see intentionally, I put two photographs. On the left hand side, this is Marina Beach, and through this, what I wanted to show you, that ये जो लाइन्थ है आपका जो सैंड देख रहे हैं, this लाइन्थ is about a kilometer. तो एक किलोमीटर तक यहाँ पे Marina Beach पे कोई construction नहीं है. That's why we need no protection over here. but this photograph is from mahabalipuram and you can see this is that famous so temple ab hame ya so temple ko protect karna hai so that's why you can see over here we have protected it through this stone work so depends for example if you will go to pondicherry you will find bahut sara construction just along the bay of bengal hai so that has been protected like this so that's what coastal protection work is alignment location design and prov uh, provision of waterway vents culverts roads and railway embankment cut across the drainage lines and may lead to increase in vulnerability of the area through which they pass to flooding and drainage con condition and what example i put for example you might have seen these days many expressways have been built jo expressway ban rahe hain kafi unko upar banaya hua hai taki submergence nahi ho inundation nahi ho but you can understand if we are going for that high expressway jo ki itna upar banaya hua hai agar uska alignment proper nahi hai to uski construction se charo taraf hi floods aa jayega that means we need much care for aligning expressway in the same way railway track humko bachane honge taki unke flooding nahi ho alignment should be like that so all these are structural measures and 
as you had that coastal zone management in case of cyclones, here you have flood plains, flood plain Yamuna may coffee flood plain population cited logaya of the series Polgia. But that is good example to understand that. And I will explain with the map of Delhi. You see what we are doing. Jo amara infrastructure hai, usko hum priority pahle decide kar rahe hai. So first priority is defense installation, industries, public utilities like hospitals, electricity installations, water supply, telephone exchanges. Buildings should be located in such a fashion that they are above the levels corresponding to 100 year frequency or maximum observed flood levels. Similarly, they should also be above the levels corresponding to a 50 year rainfall and the likely submersion due to drainage condition. Agar aapko yeh bol raha hoon priority one ka, aap just dekhe Delhi mein jo aapka Delhi kind hai, airport hai, yeh aapka Gurgaon ke side ja raha hai and you can understand highest altitude hai और यमुना से उसका डिस्टेंस सबसे ज्यादा है सेकंड प्रायोरिटी पब्लिक इंस्टीट्यूशंस गवर्नमेंट ऑफिसर्स यूनिवर्सिटीज पब्लिक लाइब्रेरीज एंड रेजिडेंशियल एरियाज बिल्डिंग्स शुड बी अबव और लेवल कोरिस्पोंडिंग टू 25 ईयर फ्लड और 10 ईयर रेनफॉल विद द स्टिपुलेशन दैट ऑल बिल्डिंग्स इन वल्नरेबल जोन्स शुड बी कंस्ट्रक्टेड ऑन कॉलम्स और स्टिल्स एज इंडिकेटेड अबव now, for example, you see Aapka Ames hai, IIT Delhi hai, Sardar Jung Hospital hai, ye sare jitne bhi aapke hai, ye sab aapke Yamuna Bank se aur Gurgaon ke ya aapke airport Delhi Kant ke beech mein aara hai. Priority 2. Priority 3, parks, playgrounds, infrastructures such as Floods. Just check that Delhi mein jaise aapka Raj Ghat hai, Santi Wan hai, ye sab Yamuna ke kinare kinare hai. Can be located in areas vulnerable to frequent floods. Since every city needs some open areas and gardens by restricting buildings activity in vulnerable area, it will be possible to develop parks and playgrounds which would provide a proper environment for the growth of the city. And now you see, Delhi ke map pe aap dekhiye, ye aapki Yamuna River hai. This is the Yamuna River. Aur aapka jo area hai, for example, ye, this is National Highway 44. So Rajgat, Santiwan, aapke jitne hai, sab Yamuna ke yaan pe kinare hai. Now you see the airport, Delicant, that's, that's what I was saying, priority one. Here you can see maximum distance and maximum altitude. And in between over here, you have IIT, Ames. So, if you want to plan a city floods, you have to plan a So that covers the floods. Now I will important part for public awareness, do's and don'ts. Keep listening to weather forecast on radio and television. Move to your residence only when instructed by the competent authority. That happened very much this time. The alley mein abhi jab sara pura flooded tha, to jab water level kam hona suru hua tha, to log jane lage the. To jo minister hai, unke aapsi unho ne kaha tha, abhi ruk jaiye, abhi aake bata raha hai, bada sakta hai. That's why move to your, your residence only when instructed by the competent authority. Do not enter deep unknown waters. Destroy the food commodities that have been affected by flood water. Of course, we should not invite apartments. Check properly all the electrical circuits, flow level furnace, boilers, gas cylinders, or electrical equipment like motor, pump, etc. 
आप लोगों ने सुना होगा जब फ्लडेड था पूरा तो कह रहे थे सारा लाइट बंद कर देती ताकि कहीं कोई किसी को करंट वगैरह नहीं लगे स्विच ऑफ द मेन इलेक्ट्रिक सप्लाई दैट्स व्हाट आई से बॉइल ड्रिंकिंग वाटर बिफोर यूजेस एंड ड्रिंक क्लोरिनेटेड वाटर ईट सेफ फूड एंड ऑफ कोर्स रिमेन काम तो दैट कवर्स द फ्लड्स तो आज यहीं तक करते हैं अभी किसी को कोई क्वेश्चन मोस्ट वेलकम Yeah, I'm waiting for your questions, players. Thank you, sir. It was a really a nice presentation, and ये जो इतना disaster को रोकने के लिए हम क्या-क्या कर सकते हैं रोक तो नहीं सकते but how we can face the disaster by implementing all these things in our structures and all so uh, now i would request all the participants to please uh, ask your questions any questions please free to ask aisa to nahi ho sakta koi bhi doubt nahi ho please free feel free i will be happy to respond your queries Vinit ji, are you there? हाँ जी हाँ जी, I'm here only. हाँ जी. So any questions? Narendra Goel ji, today with us uh, we have Narendra Goel ji also, who is a core member of our concrete engineers. Uh, so unfortunately, our chairman Nirmalendu Kar Gupta ji could not join today, as he is stuck somewhere. And Vinit ji, today with us, uh, uh, my guru is also there. Uh, uh, uh mukesh gupta ji who has taught me he is now a professor in delhi skill and entrepreneurship university so anybody has any question you can ask you can unmute yourself and ask the questions please uh, uh, welcome sir welcome gupta sir uh, you are not audible actually sir please unmute yourself you are unmute but still ha huh? uh, narendra goel ji uh, you can uh, express some views goel sam sir you are not audible still you are not audible I think there is some some problem is there. Yes, yeah. of course, I met it, but uh, some problem might be there. Yes. So you can, sir, stop presenting so that your screen will yeah. be out of the scene. Yeah. So. Uh, someone has written, sir, can we get the PPT presentation? Uh, Mr. Jelly, we will share the link of this uh, recorded uh, webinar on our YouTube channel. So you can yeah. get it from there. And also, if you have any specific queries regarding the uh, session today, you can uh, WhatsApp us or write us on admin at the rate concreteengineers.org. Yeah. Now I would request uh, Narendra Goelji, sir, please. You can share your views. Go else up, please. Uh, Go else up, you are also not audible. Yeah, it's also not audible. Uh, I think there is some lag actually. I don't know why he's co-host also.
not audible sir so uh, no issues uh, anybody has any specific questions they can always uh, mail us and we will try to get the answers from the learned uh, speaker today yeah i will be happy to respond to those sure. so uh, gupta sir uh, is your audible now your voice no 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 to abhi gupta sir ne mute mute so can he he can type no. um, uh, his question if there is any question or suggestion he can type it also so nahi ho pa raha to i think if you don't mind her pata nahi kyun aaj there may be some connectivity issue ha ah, there may be तो तो बारी बारी है 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 प्रोजेक्ट सो सर वी 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 आर अ सेकंड सेशन आल्सो सो दैट गेट दिस 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 फ्रॉम यू बिकॉज़ इज़ वेरी टॉपिक टू डेज बिकॉज़ आर फेसिंग अ लॉट ऑफ रेन्स फ्लड्स अर्थक्वेक्स साइक्लोन्स सो it is our responsibility as civil engineers to uh, mitigate the preventative measures into the construction itself and how we can uh, there is an yeah there is query from uh, goel saab that uh, can we predict earthquake of course there is no instrument so far through which we can predict Well, sir, I hope you have got your answer. Sir, actually, I have doubt, sir. Am I audible? Yeah, sir? you are audible. Yes. Sir, ah, uh, hello. Yeah, yeah, you are audible. Yes. Ah, uh, sir. yes please sai ji please uh, whatever your question is please ask sir nowadays uh, there are uh, many flooding is happening sir in rainy season so yeah. what are the preventive measures to be taken by government and uh, what are the international techniques to be followed and uh, where we are lacking to have that yeah actually uh, that's what i have shown in my presentation that we need to point uh, for example our standing of the banks i said general improvement and uh, i said that we, we must avoid flooding we must every city must have that early warning system for example happened in kerala uh, केरला में पहले कभी भी फ्लड्स नहीं आया था जिस टाइम फ्लड आया है वहाँ पे कोई अर्ली वार्निंग सिस्टम का ही नहीं तो yes, ये काम काम को करने की जरूरत पड़ती है अगर हम ये सब तैयार कर चुके हैं ओनली देन वी कैन से दैट वी आर प्रिपेयर फॉर द फ्लड गवर्नमेंट को फ्लड्स के आने से पहले चेक करना है फॉर एग्जाम्पल जैसे हमने कहा था कि जून के मंथ में जब फ्लड हो गया दहली में जुलाई में तो हम लोगों ने सारे ड्रेन्स वगैरह कुछ भी नहीं किया था कोई तैयारी नहीं की थी दैट प्रिपेयरनेस भी नहीं सर इज देयर एनी पर्टिकुलर मेथड टू ड्रेन ऑफ दिस फ्लडिंग वाटर एंड व्हाट आर द स्टेप्स टू बी टेकन टू क्लियर द फ्लडिंग वाटर इमीडिएटली दैट्स व्हाट आई एम सेइंग कि बिफोर फ्लड बिफोर रेनी सीजन सारे हमारे ड्रेनेज सिस्टम सारे साफ होने चाहिए जो कि दिल्ली में नहीं था Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Also, sir, this uh, rainwater uh, drains are actually used for some other purpose. They are built on the name of rainwater floods, but uh, drains. But uh, people are using for draining sewerage on uh, in those drains. So that for that also the municipal corporations have to be strict. so that uh, the purpose of these drains are failed actually sir that is why they are full actually actually 
अभी मेरा जो प्रेजेंटेशन था इसको वो सिविल इंजन के एस्पेक्ट को फोकस कर रहा था अदरवाइज जो आपका सिटी में जितनी फ्लडिंग होती है दैट इज डिफरेंट वी कॉल दैट अर्बन फ्लडिंग अर्बन फ्लडिंग दैट हैपेंस बिकॉज द ड्रेनेज सिस्टम इज नॉट एडुकेट that means that becomes man made disaster yes sir yeah so the aur jo sabse zyada problem hamare ko aa rahi hai india ke har city mein jo hamara drainage system hai present population ke hisab se design nahi hai yes sir yes sir and urban flooding is totally different than natural flooding mm-hmm. so uh, sir i hope uh, we can end this session now so we'll be waiting for the session to eagerly which we'll plan yeah whenever you ask me i will be available for the second and thank yes, you sir. to all the audience for their patient hearing thank you sir on behalf of concrete engineers uh, we also thank you for this wonderful presentation and uh, we hope to see more presentations from your side so thank you vineet ji and goel saab mukesh gupta sir so thank you all the participants for joining and uh, we'll be coming to you with another round of tech talk by concrete engineers which is in association with nsr cus thank you sir with this we'll end this session thank you Thanks to all of you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, waiting for the next session.